working with you. So long, pal. Hope to meet you again on another job. Now, this isn't my racket. I just filled in for one of your men that was sick. Hey, I've seen your face somewhere before. Sure. You did a good job on it, too. I told you not to let Tony Page out of your sight. That's what you're hired for. But, Mr. Potts, he locked me in the bathroom. I ain't no magician. Listen, Wilbur, if anything ever happened to Tony Page, half the women of America would go in the morning. Look, Mr. Potts, I got the interest of Breeze all at heart, but just Colonel ain't normal. One day he's driving a taxi, the next he's working as a busboy. Now he's probably running for Congress. <laughs> oh, wasn't that divine? That was high E flat above high C sharp. Oh, never mind, Beulah, I'm busy. But I have so much to offer the world. Ever since struck oil in Bentonville. I've been waiting for this moment. You know what my singing teacher told me today? Well, at well, $20 a lesson, he should have told you plenty. He said, Mrs. Potts, your voice is superb. It's a gift. You better give it back. But, darling, don't you see? Now I'm ready to sing on your program. That's all I need. If you ever sang on Breathe Ola, I'd go into the red. Red? Red, that's just your color, Arnold. So hearty, so masculine. Oh, Mr. Wilbur, don't you think my husband would look wonderful in red? He'd look just ducky. There, Admiral Steve. Beulah, sometimes you bring out the homicidal tendency in me. <laughs> Why, you darling, you haven't said anything so nice to me since our honeymoon. Greetings, J.A. Hello, Mrs. Potts. Hi, Wilbur. Now, what have you been up to? I've been painting the face of America's biggest pain in the neck, Mr. Tony Page. Ever heard of him? <laughs> Silly, that's you. Oh, no, that isn't me, Mrs. Potts. I still like to think of myself as a human being. That's ridiculous. When are you going to act like a star? Never, I hope. You think it's any fun being mauled by thousands of dizzy women? Mr. Tony Page, five minutes warning. Hurry up, Tony. Millions are waiting for you. Well, adios. And now we bring you Tony Page, the Breathe Ola Troubadour, singing those songs which have made him America's boyfriend. Tony Page. Thank you. For my first number, I'm going to sing Sweet Lips, dedicated to the Tony Page Club of Waukegan. Are you listening, ladies? Something your kisses possess That makes me lose my loneliness Sweet lips, kiss my blues away Sweet lips, bring good news my way There's some sweet something your kisses possess that makes me lose my loneliness. Sweet lips, kiss my blues away. What bliss your two lips convey their satisfaction when they're in action. Sweet lips kiss my blues away. Oh, Tony, that was divine. I'm just geek pimples all over. Now, my boy, we must be leaving. You have an important engagement. What's up now? Why, Tony, have you forgotten? The Ladies' Clam Bake Society of Hohokus are dedicating a statue to you this evening. I don't want any part of it. But you can't offend the Ladies' Clam Bake Society of Hohokus. My job is finished for today. I've got a date. Your duty is to breathe Ola. My duty is to a very charming young lady, and she's waiting for me right now. Now, look here, Tony. Sorry. You, you can have my share of the clam. Boy, oh, this is perfect. You're a funny boy, Tony. Imagine bumping along on this old bus when you might be riding in a Rolls Royce. Oh, but don't you understand, Vilma? This is where I belong. Just one of the four minutes. Hey, Tony, you're missing so much fun. I'm not missing a thing. I've got you. My evening's complete. But I like to go places where people know you. After all, you are America's boyfriend. No, I thought we were going to forget that name. After 7 o'clock at night, I want to be the real Tony Page. Just a guy nobody ever looked at twice. Nobody? Well, you can look three times.
Der kann sammelt neu bei der Gai. Hallo, Chief. Oh, hallo, Mr. Wilbur. I was just playing secretary. Well, what did you find out? The females are Scandahoovian. Her name is Vilma Blair. Vilma Blair, that's pretty. There was a young lady named Vilma Blair who loved Tony Page, who sang on the air. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Bula, go ahead. She came to this country about a year ago on a show. It was a flop polo, but Vilma decided to stick. An actress? That's bad. It's worse than that. Tony goes for like moths for a raccoon coat. I got it from a good source. He's always sending her posies. Now, isn't that sweet? That's what you used to do, Admiral, remember? I remember. This Blair dame's been telling all her friends she's gonna marry Tony. I knew it. If she does, the Breathe Ola program is washed up. I know it, but what are you gonna do when a guy's got spring in his corpuscles? Bueller, if you wanted to stop a man from getting married, what would you do? Well, now, let's see. What did Father do when he tried to keep you from marrying me? Why, why he had the firm send me to South America. That's it. You mean we're gonna take a trip? Uh, Gloria, get me, South uh, get me a messenger boy. Come in. Vilma, what's going on here? Tony, darling, isn't it wonderful? What's wonderful? Mr. Potts, he found a part for me in Hollywood. I'm leaving on the five o'clock train. But darling, don't you see it's a trick to keep us apart? Oh, really, Tony, I thought you'd be delighted to hear about my good luck. But you belong here with me. I must say you're being very selfish. You know what this would mean to me. I know what it means for both of us. More crowds, more publicity. All my life I wanted fame but and darling, I... Darling, I'm only trying to talk sense into your pretty little head. Let's tell Potts to go to blazes. There's no use, Tony. I'm leaving for California today. with you, you don't appreciate your husband. Nice work, Mr. Potts. You got rid of Vilma very neatly, didn't you? No, my boy, why worry about that Blair girl? She's not interested in you. All she wants is a career. You've interfered in my private life for the last time. When I signed that contract with you, I thought I'd be the happiest guy on earth. Plenty of money, a chance to sing. Why, it sounded perfect. I didn't know I'd have to give up all my own plans and live a phony life 24 hours a day. I didn't know I'd become public freak number one. See, that's the thanks I get for making a national hero out of a truck driver. All I want is a chance to be a normal human being like anyone else. And if you think you can cheat me out of it, you're crazy. Goodbye, Tony. Isn't he cute when he gets mad? <laughs> Listen, Tony, you got me in a playful panic. The broadcast goes on in 15 minutes. Step out of an old field. What do you want me to do, fly? Look, Sylvia, there's Tony Payne. Why, it's Tony, all right. Oh, my public. You better get out of here before there's a massacre. I'll see you later. Close. I beg your pardon. Well, you see those women? They're chasing me. Chinatown, folks. Chinatown, I don't see why. Oh, pardon me. May I introduce myself? I'm Tony Page. Not American boyfriend. I see. You've got it, too, huh? You flatter yourself. I always turn off your golden voice. You mean you don't like me? Personally, I prefer hillbilly. Say, you're all right. Are you having fun slumming? Well, I'm not going to Chinatown. I'm due at the radio station in five minutes. Well, don't let me detain you. It's not you. It's that gang of Amazons. Hey, will you help me out of a jam? Why, Mr. Page, I'd be honored. Oh, stop your kidding. All right. You see this? Sure. Well, it's a suit. Well, what do I want with it? Just this. See Chinatown. Chinatown. See Chinatown, folks. A trip you can't afford to miss. Hey, where you going? Well, I'll be back in a minute. Who is that dame, anyhow? New shill I put on last week. She's okay. Brings in lots of cash customers. I told you never to hire any shills without an okay from the boss. Hey, you don't think she's a copper, do you? I don't trust nobody. Hi, Wilbur, where's Tony Page? You mean to say he ain't here yet? Those female tacklers must have him on the 40-yard line by now. Relax. Act as though you're an American husband instead of a... I know, America's boyfriend. 
If you don't stop ribbing me, I'll drop this bag. Oh, no, you won't. Come on, snuggle up and pretend that we're married. A pleasure, madame. Hurry, dear, the boss is coming home for dinner. I'm coming. Tina! Oh! Tony Pace! Here he is, Tony! Tony Pace! him now. I'll hold the door open. Tell him to run for it. There's absolutely no truth to that report. As long as Tony Page is under contract to me, there'll be no marriage. Oh, a marriage? Oswald, why didn't you tell me? I can just see you giving the bride away at Duchess Lace. Oh, of course, I mean, she'll be wearing the lace. I do ramble on, don't I? You rubbed me the wrong way. Why, darling, I haven't rubbed you since you had lumbago. Actresses, Duchess Lace, reporters. It's a wonder I'm not dead. And you haven't any insurance. Who'd write a policy on my life? They say that any man who marries you is a bad risk. Now, Arma, this is no time for compliments. Quiet. If you feel death approaching, you should do something about it. Well, what is it? The women in our town refuse to buy any more of your products if Tony Page marries. As long as my name is J. Ardmore Potts, he won't marry. Here it is. I found it. Found what? The Madison Insurance Company will insure anything from a Pekingese pup to a floating rib. There, you see, if they'll insure a Pekingese, they ought not to mind you. Insurance. Beulah, will they insure a man against love? Now, now, dear, you're getting feverish. You better take a cold shower. Hmm? Give me that card. Where are you going? I'm going out to buy myself some love insurance. But they won't give you a policy on something that's already dead. <laughs> Mr. Potts, I've written many weird policies in my day, but your proposition is the strangest I've ever heard. You can insure a man's life, why can't you insure his heart? Pardon me, please. Then, Mr. Lanian, please. I'd like her advice on this matter. Do you want me, Uncle Ned? June, this is Mr. Potts of the Breathola Company. Mr. Potts, my niece and business associate, Miss Delaney. How do you do? I want an insurance policy that will obligate you to pay me $300,000 if Tony Page gets married. Oh, I see. You intend to keep him America's boyfriend. Exactly, and I'm willing to pay a heavy premium. Well, would Mr. Page submit to an examination? Examination? Well, certainly. If our test shows he has a weakness for the ladies, well, he's a poor risk. That's impossible. Why, if Tony knew I was doing this, he'd raise the devil. Does he have to know? Now, Mr. Page, you please relax. I said relax. Mr. Page, we're drifting through a kingdom filled with beautiful women. Think of Eve. Think of Venus. Think of Helen of Troy. I'd rather think of a number from one to ten. Hmm? Amazing. What did you say, Doctor? Your heart. It's amazingly strong. Say, what is this, a fashion show? Oh, Mrs. Grogan. Oh, Mrs. Grogan. Doctor, that girl. It's last time we indicated. Hey, get this thing off me, will you? Hurry up. I gotta get out of here. Come on, get out of here. A most amazing specimen, this Tony Page. The one time she showed any great emotion was when Scrub Woman appeared. Then she quite lost control of himself. I can't understand. I can. Uncle Ned, I'd advise you to write this policy. But, my dear, the young man is an unusual case. I think I can deal with him. You must be a superwoman. Oh, no. All Mr. Page needs is a young lady who will keep him guessing. Tony Page is bored with all women who pursue him. Now, find the girl who pretends to dislike him, and he'll move heaven and earth to please her. Miss Delaney is right. Mr. Page needs to be frustrated by some young woman. And I'm a candidate for the job. Nonsense, June. You've got to work on our case against the bus company. The trial is scheduled for next month. Well, but I'm ready for that, Uncle Ned. 
Right now, I'd like to tackle America's boyfriend. But he might fall in love with you. Oh, the better. Then he won't marry some other girl in a moment of weakness. Well, how are you going to do all this? You're going to help me, Mr. Potts. I want you to arrange a casual meeting with Tony Page. Good afternoon, Gloria. Will you please tell my husband I'm without? But he's in conference with Mr. Page. Oh, that's quite all right. They won't bother me. Oh, Aunt Maud, the most wonderful thing has happened. Beulah, I, I, I haven't time. I've written a new song, and you simply must put it on your program. Agamemnon. Yes, my inspiration. Play. Beulah, I, I'm expecting a visitor. It's called, uh, You Are My Rosebud. Pretty? You are my rosebud. Do you suppose a bud? Beautiful in love with me. Fall in love with me. If the garden of my heart, you are the sweetest pepper, we must never, never part. I get you yet. My rose bud, before I close, but I want to tell you, you're delicious, you're determined, you're distracting, you're delirious, you're divine. You're I never heard anything like it. Send her in. Captain, Captain. will you get out of here and take these two wolf hounds with you? Everywhere for you. Where have you been? Who are you? Pardon me, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Mr. Oh, Payne. No, you don't. I let you get away from me once, but it's not going to happen again. There's nothing you can do for me. No oh, one must see Mr. Potts. Oh, no. Whoa there. I, I'll be all right in a minute. Oh, you're going to sit right down on that couch there and listen to Dr. Page. Try a little of this. Young lady, we're going to have to do something about your case. Give me that. Easy now. Let's check over your visible assets. We've got one handkerchief, one purse, one powder compact, and one key ring. <laughs> Too bad you can't mind your own business. And one dime. Are you going to finance pots with this? Oh, why, I left a $20 bill at home. Uh -huh. I must go right back and get it. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just take it easy now. There, that's much better. What's going on here? This little lady went on a diet until she could get a kind word from you, and she's nearly starved to death. Oh, Mr. Potts, I'm June Delaney, the singer from Galesburg. And you simply must listen to me. Of course he will, dear. And I've got a song of my own you can sing. It goes, you are... Juna, be quiet. I hope you're not fooled by this lady's fainting spell, Tony. That's the oldest gag in the world. But she needs money. She needs food. I've heard these stories many times. Mr. Delaney, you better leave my office. Ardmore, you brute. Pay no attention to my husband. He isn't himself. Or is he? Beulah Potts! I'll be glad to leave, Mr. Potts. And thanks so much for your courtesy. But wait a minute, you can't go like that. Oh, I don't want any help from you, Mr. America's boyfriend. Potts, you've got the soul of an iceberg. We businessmen know how to handle these fakers. That girl's no faker, she's desperate. And I'm going to help. It worked! It worked! Mr. Delaney, wait! Well, you're the first girl who ever walked out on me. Let me go. Now, now. How about a nice cup of coffee, a sandwich, and you and me? I wish you'd let me alone. I wouldn't go anywhere with you, Mr. Tony Page. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it. Oh. oh. Quit acting like a prima donna. You're going to throw yourself in front of a nice, juicy steak. 
down. Right. Well, your treatment was a great success, Dr. Page. Oh, but you're not cured yet. I always keep my patients under very close observation. I'm on the recovered list already. Just send me your bill the first of the month. Where do you think you're going? To look for work. Oh, no, you're not. You're going home and get a good night's rest. And I'm going to see that you get there safely. Thank you, but I'll manage. No, now, don't argue with me. This Dr. Page is a stubborn cuss. So am I. And you're not going to take me home. You've been riding around for an hour, Miss Delaney. Are you quite sure you live in this city? Well, I seem to be a little mixed up. Perhaps you better let me off here. I can find the house myself. You're a very good actress, but you can't fool me. I'm going to find you a home. Take us to West 53rd Street. Here we are. How do you like your new home? Oh, I couldn't stay here. Why, it's a grand little roost. Come on, someday it might be a landmark. Here's where that first-rate truck driver, Tony Page, used to live. You a truck driver? One of the best. Hello, Mr. Page. Hello, Mr. Page. <laughs> I brought you a new customer. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, Tony. Miss Delaney, meet Mrs. Grimes, the pride of West 53rd Street. Oh, go on. How do you do, my dear? How do you do? You think you can find room for my protege? Sure. Any friend of yours is welcome here. You know that. <laughs> if she's a little behind in the rent, don't worry, because I'm going to find her a job. Well, I can fight my own battle. Well, of course you can. But it's a good idea to have a truck driver in your corner. And don't forget, we've got a date at 7.30. Oh, no, I can't... Well, well I can't see you again. 7.30. Wear a smile and we'll go places. Goodbye, Mrs. Grimes. Goodbye. Come, dear. No. Oh, there's an opportunity for you, young lady. How about it? You mean you want me to sing in the contest? That's right, sure. Hey, look, in this great democracy of ours, you gotta start at the bottom. Remember me, a humble truck driver? Oh, Mr. Page, I'd be scared to death. Well, I'll be there to cheer you on. I'll even sing in the contest myself. Oh, if you only could. Oh, no, no, they recognize you in a minute. I'll fix that. Have you got an eyebrow pencil? Mm-hmm. Right. Here. And now, my ducking dreamers, the sponsors of your favorite mattress, that magic carpet which wafts you to slumberland, bring you the stars of the future. And who might you be, my dear sir? Well, I'm Otis Clapsaddle, and these here fellas there, the Ozark Bo Brummel. Greetings, my lad. And what are you and the Bo Brummels going to offer the Ducky Dream public? I'll have you know we hitchhiked clean from Oklahoma to sing on the radio. Huh. The folks down home says we're a regular sympathy orchestra. Well, play, my fine fellow. Well, I'll do my best. Better go, fellas. Burn them to a frazzle. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have got a letter from a man in town. Telling me to leave the hills and come on down. Make a lot of money on the radio. Oh, singing my hillbilly song. There ain't nobody wants to hear my tunes at all. I have watched the heavens, but no pennies fall. Up and down the alleys with doodly hoo Singing my hillbilly song. Well, can't they see a movie star in me? Well, don't they know a personality? If I could only get a little break, I would buy a great big juicy steak. I'm so hungry I could eat a table leg, but I'm much too proud to ever try to beg. Wish that I was sitting at my own back door singing my hillbilly song. <laughs> I'd like to get on the air, or should I say get the air? 
What's your name? Uh, Elmer Throckmorton. Well, Elmer, what's on your mind? Uh, I'd, uh, I'd like to give uh, my impression of Tony Page. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Elmer Throgmorton will goggle a few cadenzas. So sit back and imagine that you're listening to Tony Page. <coughs> Sweet lips, kiss my blues away. Sweet lips. Bring good news my way. There's some sweet something. <laughs> Sorry, Elmer, but I had to stop you. We just had a phone call from Tony Page, and he threatens to sue the station. <laughs> the next amateur is this little lady. Come on up. What's your name? Oh, Minerva Fitch. I'm the singer of hot songs. Well, come on, burn us up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Minerva Fitch, the toast of New York. <laughs> What is it that takes you and makes you a slave? What is it that won't let your poor heart behave? What's the mysterious feeling? Why does it make you rave? It's the funniest little thing, this business of love. Cute and cunningest little thing, this business of love. It lifts you up to the ceiling, there's nothing quite above it. Though at times it makes you so unhappy, still you learn to love it. It's the busiest little thing, this business of love. That's the dizziest little thing, this business of love. You may think you've got the laugh on it, but you don't know the half of it. This frantic, sweet, romantic business of love. <laughs> You won first prize. Yep. May I have your autograph? Oh, pleasure, Mr. Throgmorton. Poor Mr. Throgmorton. He didn't even win a mattress. Say, June, will you do me a favor? Yeah. Lend me that prize money. I'll make good. Come on. Say, I've been looking for you everywhere. There was a mistake about the prizes. Oh, yeah. Sure, you won first prize. The judges got the names mixed up, and when they went to look for you, you were gone. On the level, mister? You ain't spoofing? You can ask my girlfriend. Yes, yes. Doggone, we sure needed that money. It's all yours. Tony, that was sweet. Oh, the poor fella needed the money. But don't worry, the $50 is still yours. Oh, well, I wasn't thinking of that. Well, might as well be a real gambler. Penny for your thoughts. They're not with a plug nickel. Say, anything about you is the real McCoy with me. Hey, is word gotten around that I sort of like you? I think we'd better go. Miss Vilma Blair, the little Swedish girl who arrived in Hollywood last month, clicked beautifully in her screen test. And superb pictures have offered her a contract. Well, <laughs> that settles little Miss Blair. Beulah, you married a smart man. Why, Admo, you know I've never been married before. You're the only man in my life. All right, all right, just forget it. 
What is it? Mr. Potts, Mr. McGrath of Superba Pictures is here to see you. Send him in. I think you can go in now, Mr. McGrath. Thanks very much, Miss Temple. You are my rose. Dula, Dula, I'm going to have a very important conference. That's quite all right, Angel. Just lower your voice. You won't bother me a bit. Oh, Mr. McGrath. <laughs> I've just been reading about our little protege. Potts, are you trying to ruin my company? What do you mean? I sent you Vilma Blair, didn't I? Look. Exactly. You sent us Vilma Blair. We spent thousands of dollars on a publicity campaign for her, and what happens? Can we have three guesses? Don't bother. I'll tell you. Miss Blair's been in this country over a year without a permit. And now the government is going to send her back to Sweden. She's an alien. And she looked like such a nice girl. Send her back? Well, that's fine. What? Well, that's a fine state of affairs. Well, we may get out of trouble, but it's no thanks to you. Why, of course. You could make the picture on Ellis Island. We'll do better than that. We'll get her an American husband. Miss Blair tells me that your Tony Page is ready to marry her right now. Well, she can't do that. I'll sue her. I'll sue you. Ardmore, your face is so red. Wouldn't he be wonderful in color? Hello, get me Mr. Madison. Yes? Oh, hello, Mr. Potts. Now, see here, Madison. Unless you act quickly, Miss Blair will marry Tony Page, and I'll collect $300,000 from your company. And I'll get a new fur coat. No! You will know how to deal with him. She reports that Tony has been with her every night this week. This is the forest primeval. Murmuring pine in the hemlock. I'll bet you recited that in school. Well, I was the best darn orator in the class. We gave me first prize. Gee, yeah, I'd like to have known you that. <laughs> I'll bet I'd have licked any kid in school that wanted to walk home with you. Oh, I was a sight. My hair was in pigtails and freckles. I'd have loved every one of them. Tony. Darling, you're a lifesaver. Just when I was beginning to think that life wasn't worth a plug nickel, in walked you. I met the man I thought was the most conceited bore in the whole world. He turned out to be you. We're going places, we two. And we're not going to let the rest of the world horn in on our party. Tony, you can't. Don't you see, you've got a job on your hands, and there's no room for me in the life of America's boyfriend. Let's forget about him. June, I'm so crazy about you. Do you see what I mean? Yes, I see. Tony, there's something I must tell you. What do you want? Now, take it easy, Mr. Madison. This is just a friendly call. You can tell your boss that I'm going to prosecute the bus company to the full extent of the law. Well, you don't have to get so tough. It's high time we ended your little game of robbing sightseers in Chinatown and then collecting insurance from me. Now, maybe we can get together on that. Sure, you wouldn't want to have no serious trouble, would you? You men can't frighten me. We'll fight that out in court. Okay, Madison. And don't slam the door when you leave. Uncle Ned. Why? Hello, dear. That's her, all right. Well, Uncle Ned, I'm tired. I need a vacation. Can't we turn Tony Page over to someone else? June, have you lost your mind? Why, well, you have the young man eating out of your hand. Why, well, this is no time to quit. Oh, but I'm fed up. Well, I don't like the job. I've just talked with Mr. Potts, and he tells me that Tony Page is in love with a Swedish actress. She's coming back to New York to marry him. Oh, well, that's impossible. Vilma Blair has told the newspaper that she and Tony will be married this week. So you see, my dear, I can't afford to release you. Why, if we have to pay Mr. Potts $300,000, it will ruin the company. I understand. After all, the policy was your idea. You've got to go through with this. All right, Uncle Ned. When insurance policies come in the door, love flies out the window. Well, hello, Miss Grimes. I'd like to see Miss Delaney. She's not here. Well, when will she be back? Listen, Mr. Page, there's something funny about that girl. She hasn't spent one night in her room. What are you talking about? Well, I'm not a body to dish the dirt. But why does she come back here only the nights when you're visiting her? And who's this Mr. Potts she's always telephoning? Potts? Sure, and I can't help but hear. And one night she said, it's working fine. Tony doesn't even suspect. Well, I don't like that funny kind of business. Thank you, Ms. Grimes. 
And you promised to keep him so interested in you, he wouldn't look at another girl. And she did a good job, too. I can give Mr. Laney a swell recommendation. Tony. But it was a waste of time. I'm marrying Vilma Blair tonight after the broadcast. If you do that, I'll have to pay Mr. Potts $300,000. Fine. You can use that money to buy me a wedding present. Now, see here, Tony, you can't make a fool out of Breezola. Hello? Mr. Potts, we have London on the wire. I don't want to talk to London. Congratulations, June. Really was a marvelous act. You know, for a while, I thought you really liked me. Oh, Tony, you don't understand. I understand perfectly. You're a very clever girl. No nonsense, no sentiment, strictly business. But, Tony, we only did this to protect you. You owe it to the public. Yes? You should call to France, Mr. Potts. France? You must have your wires crossed. Mr. Page, I appeal to your sense of fair play. Fair play? I think you'd better speak to Miss Delaney about that. Goodbye, June. It was great fun while it lasted. I think I'll wire my congressman and have him send you a medal. Mr. Potts, I think I can stop this marriage. Get Wilbur in here. What are you going to do? I'm going to take advantage of the fact that Tony loves me. Even if he doesn't know it. Another hour more, and I'll have to deliver you to this Tony Page. I'm sorry, David, believe me. If there were another solution for us, you know I prefer to become Lady Banning. It's essential that you marry an American citizen. I understand. Goodbye, darling. I'll call you at the hotel. Goodbye, my sweet. Vilma! Tony Angel! Thank heaven we are together again, my darling. Yes, it's, uh, it's grand. So now you're a great Hollywood star, eh? Now I'm the future Mrs. Tony Page. Have you made all the arrangements? Of course. We're to be married tonight after the broadcast. Are you sure these two men are the type? Well, our public enemy yearbook gives them top premium for the entire year. Wonderful. Wilbur, you know the nicest people. Oh, Mr. Lane. Come in. Come on in, boys. Reckon it's okay, Elmer. Oh, come on. We, we, we pretty near ain't scared of nothing. Fellas, this is Mr. Lane. Pleased to know you, ma'am. I'm, I'm pleased to meet, pleased to meet, pleased to meet me. Hello there. You mean to say these two boys are desperate characters? As tough as a mother-in-law's heart. Yeah, well, they call it, they call it the, 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 the Texas Terrors. Well, we come from Milk Alley, and the further up the alley you go, the thicker the milk. Yeah, and, and we're just two, two chunks of butter. Yeah, we was doing swell back in Texas until the drought ruined business. Yeah, that, that drought, that drought, it, it, it got so dry back there that, that the creek started squeaking when it run. And now, boys, I want you to make this a nice, refined kidnap. Sure. There ain't nothing vulgar about our methods, is it, Elmer? Oh no, you 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 can you can trust you can trust us. Uh, yeah. We're we're okay. Well, I sure, sure ho hope so. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the Breathe Ola program, starring America's boyfriend Tony Page. <laughs> Thank you. I want you folks to be the first to hear the good news. Tonight, after the broadcast, I'm going to marry the sweetest girl in the whole world. I'm dedicating my first number to her, to Know You Care. Confidentially speaking, how do I rate with you? Are my chances brighter? Tell me, do. I would feel like a million heart if I but knew you wanted me the way I want you to know you care to know you're thinking of me sincerely love me that's all I care Oh, you care to please 
a world of difference underneath the sun. When two hearts together beat as one, please let me share the thrill of your caresses, my happy. program just a moment to bring you an important news bulletin. This evening, Miss June Delaney was kidnapped by two armed men who seized her in front of the Madison home, forced her into a car and drove off. Any person having information as to the whereabouts of Miss Delaney will please communicate with the police. Luber, you sure got this town in uproar. I think I did a pretty good job myself. But I still don't like the idea of the Delaney dame using my club as a hideout. Suppose the cops crack down on us. It's just like I told you. The gas stays here till tomorrow night. By that time, the Swedish dame will be on the boat, and we send June back to Tony with love and kisses. Well, ten grand is ten grand. I guess we can take a chance. Come in. We got to go, we got to go, we got to get in now. now here she is. Chief, this is Miss Delaney, your guest for the weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I promise not to make any trouble. You'll find me a very reasonable customer. <laughs> That's okay with me. But I think you're taking a big chance just to keep some guy from getting married. Well, I hope it works. Well, just to kill some time, let's start a poker game. Hmm? Poker? Oh, no. I've never played it before in my life. Really? It's a cinch. All you got to do is get the right card. I'll be back in time for the payoff. I got to get a glass of milk. Vitamins. <laughs> this thing. Well, beginner's luck, I guess. Great work. This rate, you'll soon win back all the money you paid us. Yeah. Well, looks like they skin enough. Skunk, that's awesome. Yeah, I thought you two guys were big shots. Well, if you think we're in a little thin uh, fizzle, Willie, you've got another class class conference thinking. Yeah, our sister's the one that teached us how to be plenty tough. One day she walked into town to deposit her egg money in the bank, and just she stepped in the bank, 50 bank robbers, armed with shotguns, machine guns, and gunny sacks stepped in. Jimmy. Give me your gold, the outlaw snoop, the outlaw snoop, snap. Yeah, and our sis seen what was happening and started swinging, and first thing you know, she'd knocked out ten of them bandits just colder in a wagon tire. Her name was Scrawny. Next thing we seen of her, she come marching down Main Street with both arms full of them machine guns and all of them bank bandits walking ahead of her with gunny sacks over their heads. Yeah, and, and the sheriff just give her all them machine guns. Did you just for a restaurant reward? She learned how to shoot them, too. She used to set up a tin can at the bottom of the mountain and start with one of these here machine guns and cut loose and just roll it right up over the top. She sure did, just, just like... <laughs> and then she... <she'd... laughs> yeah, we, we, we got so we could shoot them things pretty good, too. Me and Austin just set them machine guns up on the back porch and cut corn clean up in the North 40. Yeah. Just like this. Why, we're the best we're the best machine gunners in the country, and we ain't skinning now. Scared of nothing. Hi, Chief. <laughs> Come in, Eddie. Let's get the game's wide open. Sure, I got a hunch this is my lucky day. Why, well, Miss Delaney, you can't quit while you're winning. Well, I think you better excuse me. Hey, what's this dame doing here? Why, well, she's a house guest at the furnace club for over the weekend. Mr. Delaney, Mr. Wilson. House guest, huh? Well, that's perfect. Let go, you're hurting my arm. Take it easy, buddy. What's wrong with you? You know who she is? I never saw this man before in my life. You mean you wish you'd never seen me before? Sit down. She tipped off our bus racket. I hired her for a shill. Why, she's got enough dirt to send this whole gang up the river for life. You mean she's mixed up with the insurance company? Sure, she's old man Madison's niece. She's going into court next week and tell everything she knows. Thanks for saving us the trouble of finding you. We'll just see to it that you don't get to that trial next week. Lock her up. Where do you two think you're going? We're going after our... We're going after our sister, Scrawny. Sit down. We'll sit down when we're good and ready. Sit down. Well, you sat down. Well, we was ready.
Hello? Hello, Tony. This is Wilbur. I'm at the Finest Club. Listen, Tony. June's in trouble. Yeah, they're going... Okay, Wilbur, get going. Yeah, sure. Hello. Hello. Wilbur. Hello. Hey, Jim, you know this guy, Tony Page? Sure. Well, if he tries to get into the club tonight, stop him. Okay. Dan's got a swell idea for publicity stunt tonight. For the first time a couple's ever been married on the floor of a nightclub. Yes. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, we offer you the most novel feature ever presented in a nightclub. Two throbbing hearts will be united to the music of Teddy Winston and his furnace club blue blow. Here's your grub. I can't eat. My noise is all unstrung. How did you get here? Never mind how I got here. How are we going to get out of here? Hey, Fitz. What do you want? Just give me space. Look out for this. Come in, John Laney. John, get, just get us out of here. Get it. Hey. You can't do that. Up, ladies and gentlemen. Dan Walters, owner of the Furnace Club, has offered a furnished apartment to the first couple that get married on this dance floor tonight. Oh, come on, folks. Get married at the Furnace Club and live like a king, with Big Dan paying all the bills. Hello, Sergeant O'Hara. This is Wilbur Corrigan. Listen, Walters gang have got June Delaney and Tony Page down here. Yeah, at the Furnace Club. What's wrong with you folks? Here's Judge Carter, all ready to tie the knot. A clerk to hand out the license. Come on, folks. People are still getting married. Why not you? Ah, here's a happy young couple. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, here is love in person. Will you step right down this way, please? Right here. Is this the happy pair? Sure, it'll only take a minute, folks. Just sign the license. We'll go ahead with the ceremony. Tony, we can't do this. $300,000 against our lives. Go ahead. When that guy comes off the floor, get him. Uh, join hands, please. Sure. Well, reckon Scrawn would be, be proud of us now. Do you, Anthony Page, take June Delaney to be your lawful wedded wife and to love and honor her during the natural course of your life? I do. Oh, no, he doesn't. Oh, he yes, can't. I do. <laughs> do you, June Delaney, take Anthony Page to be your lawful wedded husband, promise to love and honor him during the natural course of your life? No! Better say yes, or the natural course of your life will be about ten minutes. Oh, all right. Yes. Right this way, Sergeant! By virtue of the authority vested in me as judge of the municipal court of this city, I pronounce you man and wife. Congratulations, Mrs. Page. How soon can we have this marriage annulled? <laughs> No argument, Madison. I want my $300,000. But I'm willing to have the marriage annulled. It's no use. The harm's been done. Ah, no, you brute. Here you go, building schoolhouses all over the country. And how do you expect to get them filled if you act like this? I'll make you a sporting proposition. Young man, I'm not interested. Oh, yes, you are. She's a grand little singer. No! <laughs> I thought you meant me. Listen, June's a grand little singer. And if we went on the air together, we'd make my old program sound like an also oh, I never want to speak to you again. Quiet, Mrs. Page. You'll sing and like it. Why, I think it's a beautiful idea to see sweethearts. That's what you'd be. Right, and our first number will be You Are My Rosebud. Oh, Tony, <laughs> I've always wanted to be a bust in the Hall of Fame. You're a bust right now. I wouldn't even consider the idea. J. Admar Pop, C. 
this is my great chance. And no, nobody's going to stop me. Oh, how about it, Patsy? If we don't knock the country for a loop, I'll pay you. Well, I... Ardmore? All right, it's a deal. I give you the singing sweethearts, Mr. and Mrs. Tony Payne. Something your kisses possess That makes me lose my loneliness Sweet lips, kiss my blues away What bliss your two lips convey Their satisfaction when they're in action Sweet lips, kiss my blues 